And we are live. Hello everyone, how's it going? Today, I don't have any solid plan on what to make next, because yesterday, after that stream, I went and organized every single file, or assembled every single file that was a simulation or buffer controlled project, like the one you're seeing currently. The old balloons, tower defense, and blender. This one is still very nice because I didn't know that making a full-on game was possible in Blender and having it run by itself. But it is. And since 3.6 came out, it means that I need to update almost all of these to the new simulation nodes. Because with this one I already did it and with a few of them I, I did. But since these ones are new, I need to go and add those into new files so that they do not break. So I went and looked and I was like, hmm, how many of these do I have to change? Turns out I have 106 simulation projects that I've made over the course of the last six months. And I need to update most of those if I want to turn them into usable products or just things to share with you guys if you want to learn from them properly. So I got this one done last night. And now I just want to update a few more of them. To, uh, and we could also just review the project. So let's go and open up a different one. So let's see. You probably can't see my screen currently, but I'm going to pull up. Let's see. Ah, the reaction diffusion one. Let's go and bring up this one. This one was a favorite of mine. You can't currently see. Oh, this was a buffer one. But it also has a simulation. So let's go and hook these up to update it, because when the new nodes were added, it broke it. So now we should see in this file, that's 17.6 per month. That checks out, because I would do multiple tests per day, and some days I wouldn't do any. But here's the reaction diffusion one. And this one is pretty simple. We start off with a little bit of like noise value on the geometry stored as a spread value then we just take that amount we take a small blur and we subtract a bigger blur off of it and then we multiply the amount by two that value is kind of nebulous all of these are kind of nebulous depending on which effect you want and then that spread i turned into just a gradient do i need to do that oh yeah i blurred it once that's just like a post-processing thing I actually don't even need this part right here. I could just take this out and then blur this data as a post effect. There we go. Just to, you know, make it a little bit smoother for the end result. So there we go. We, we got rid of another named attribute and I need to make sure that those are labeled the same. So if we take a look at the output, I need to put the spread value as the... There we go. Or maybe I should rename it all to gradient just to make it more generalized. Yeah, let's do that. So instead of the gradient being there, let's go into the geometry node editor. Oh, we are already in that. So let's label all these gradients. Oops. There we go. And that'll make everything a bit simpler. There we have it. There we go. Much more generalized. But there we go. And let's play around with this a little bit just to see what happens if I say turn off spread while well, that, yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Here we get, ooh, almost like a, a very nice grid effect. Let's change this to five and that to four. So this will give us a different, yeah, not as much spread going on, but a little bit more, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty good. It gives a more rounded result. Oh yes, and this works on any geometry, not just, uh, the default. Yeah. Which is very nice. It gives a pattern that is seamless which as well, which is very nice. I like that. So, maybe let's turn this down and just have... And that's not too bad. Again, it is slow, which I dislike. So let me turn up the blur by quite a bit. That actually make it makes it look worse. Makes it look worse, yeah. So if I do that, we get a much more... Oh, well that's cool. Again, 
if I want to turn up the uh, post processing. Oh, that's why. That's why I had the named attribute. Okay. Well, I could just do that as a post effect as well. I'll just store the gradient as something that is blurred in the end. So, yeah, only one gets simulated, but then I blur it as a post effect. There we go. I just don't want to overcomplicate it. So having just a few nodes as a post effect is good. And let me label this because, oddly enough, back in the day, I did not label the nodes correctly, which was very annoying to, for me going back to my projects. So this will be Ray's uh, Geometry. There we go. This will just be Blur Gradient. I need to make sure to spell everything correctly. I think the Minecraft music is a little bit too low, so let me bump that up by a little bit. There we go. Reaction mix. I'll just put in parentheses. Big, wait, no. Small blur minus big blur. Small blur minus big blur. I like putting in very basic terms because that's what my brain understands. New frame data, eh, that, that's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll keep it there. So there we go. Reaction diffusion, very easily done. <laughs> I like how the simulation zone is just that big. I did kind of hear that the, the devs were thinking about Actually, wait a second. I need to try something. What if I just... Yeah, what if I did this? Would this actually work? It, it does. That actually seems alarmingly fast. Let me change this to 60 frames per second just to see what the speed limit is compared to the other one. So this is running at about 50 frames per second. That's as fast as it can go. Here, let me... Oh no, okay, so the real speed limit is that. So if I were to undo this and bring it back to the, you know, super understandable version, let it rebake at 60 frames per second just so that we can see what the actual speed limit of it is. Oh, it's actually faster with stored named attributes. Who would have thought? Certainly not me. Um, let's switch this back to there. Orange, yes. Orange is my color, so I, I, I like it a lot. I like it a, a lot. Actually, I haven't showed, I haven't shown you all this. I'll just show you really quick. I need to. Recently, I bought some caramel ice cream. So let me... Uh, you guys cannot see uh, photos outside of this. Recently bought caramel ice cream. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And surprisingly on brand. So I decided, you know what? Let me try to make a render in Blender. So I did. It needs some work. It, it feels a little off. But, you know, cool stuff. And also, another recent project of mine. I like this one. Even though that it's the color of Colgate toothpaste, I do like it. I, I like the ones with the super bold colors. But yes, caramel ice cream. On brand for my channel, but I would really recommend it. It is really, really good. Okay. So here this is. I'm going to reduce the map blur amount. I like the, that pattern's nice. It's a little square. So maybe I'll, let's see. I don't like the ones that look a bit square in this case. So let me go and, still feels way too square. So let me, okay, so that makes it more square. So the initial stuff makes it less square. Good to know. Okay, that feels good. Feels like reaction diffusion instead of like, Bells. 
That's an interesting pattern right there. It looks like... It looks like a character where that's the mouth and then that's its little hairdo and then that's its, I guess, di digestive tract. Oddly enough. But there's that. Okay, whoops, I forgot to pull screen again. But yeah, there's the reaction to fusion. And that is good. I still have the buffer version. Wait a second, is that... Oh, oh okay, so none of these are the buffer version anymore. The buffer is now unnecessary, so I can delete that. There's a background in here. What did, oh, that's for that. Okay. So I can render this. But it needs a better background than what's currently there. Ooh, that, that looks pretty good. For the camera, I'm going to... I don't like how shallow that depth of field is feeling. So let me go and bring this to be more like that. That feels a little bit better. I'm not sure which is better, the, the plane or the sphere for showcasing it. I think the plane, but this is pretty cool in case I want, like, a cool artifact. And there's all the geometry this is operating on, which is, actually, I'm surprised it's this performant. I thought it would be quite a bit worse. Captain Caramel now? <laughs> Maybe. Cartesian Caramel makes sense. Oh, I like seeing the blur. Wow. Oh, wow, that looks like forbidden macaroni and cheese. Well, I guess that is a way to make it. Like, this actually... That looks like... Wow, that is a very interesting effect. An anemone. Yeah. All kinds of cool effects. And since it's a post effect, I can just blur it normally. Like, that could be a brain... Apologies, everyone. I must try this. Okay. Yeah, it kind of looks like a brain or a forbidden meatball. But yep, that is what I wanted to test. I really like how on here you could see like a little bump before all that happens. It looks so clean. Hmm. So this will most likely go up on my Gumroad because it's a, it's a nice little effect to showcase. Oh, here's the power of simulation nodes and a not too complicated package i know this isn't the simplest setup but it's not too bad not too bad so in my calculations uh, i found that since i have that 106 uh, projects just waiting to be converted into actual products i am set for the next year in terms of my gumroad uploads which is a little frightening to think of. It's just like, oh wow, I made enough for the next year. But yeah, we'll we'll see how that goes. I'm still waiting on the for each loops in geometry nodes. So until those come, I'll just be updating all of these. So let me save this. What is this labeled as? Ah, oh, it's still labeled as 3.5. Is there a way to rename the file inside of Blender? I don't believe so. That is a bummer. I usually try to rename these to 3.6 once they come along. Let's see. Open. Are you making a game? Uh, well, I mean, maybe. That's a big maybe, depending on which one's... Uh, happen when let's see i could open which one needs updating like really really needs updating let me go through you guys cannot see what i'm currently looking at water glass sim but that's in 3.5 i don't know let's take a look at it water glass oh no i remember this one we are not going back here no 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 but maybe i could update it this one was trying to get um, angular velocity working right. Click on the file and press F2 in Blender folders. Yeah, I do know that method, but I wanted to do it inside of Blender so that I wouldn't have to look up the file in inside of it. Let's see, so not that one. Oh, here was a fun project. It doesn't, okay, it does need updating. There we go. So this was a fun project where there's just books. 
but they have physics. So the actual animation of these books, let me showcase that. The actual animation is just that, then that. That's the animation, but then I wanted the, you know, the delay factor happening. So with this, I wish I could optimize it. This is to get the kind of delay vector and all of that. It's, it should be a lot easier to do that, which actually, I think it might be. It probably is, but I'll need to redo it. I just like the, um, let's see. I just like how you can see like the bounce back. That's what physics and geometry dynamics are all about. So let's go. I'll be hopping between a lot of files today, so please, um, please bear with me. Ooh, here's a good one. The particle tree. Yes, let's take a look at this one. Does this use... It uses actual simulations, so let me go and update that. What are you? Is that the... Oh, that's the initial... Pro oh, this one needs updating badly. Because, yeah, how would I ever know how to, what is going on in that scene? I apologize for all the tutorials I've done in the past where I did not name any of this. That does not need to be connected, I don't think. Okay, let's take a look. Of course, the HDRI is missing because I moved this to another file. Oh, God. Okay, so one thing with the simulation nodes that I dislike compared to the old version, that since it caches all of this, the file, the disk, becomes extremely heavy. Even though, wait a second, it might have lagged in the old file. I kind of forget. Let's see. Here, let me switch to something else. So this was a cool file, but I don't think I'll keep it in the end. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, what have I done? Yikes. This is one of the most overly complicated scenes I've ever made. Let's let it run and see. Okay, so... Yeah, it is the caching that is making this super difficult, super laggy. I don't know what the leaves... Oh, wait, I need... Those leaves need to be simulated. Let's plug that in and see what will happen. Ah, okay, so I made it so that leaves would spawn in as it would go along. Okay. Okay. At least it, I can update it to something recent. Like, look! Oh my goodness, that is... No. No, no, no. Like, look at this. I, I can't believe that I made this before. It's also... It's not labeled, so I don't know. Like, what does S mean? I don't know what S means. I'm assuming spawn, but I do not know. Gross. Here, let's just put initial date nope let's label it initial data or data as curtis says it this is just age there we go looks a little cramped because the selection input wasn't there when i made this um what life why is this 250 divided by one Oh my god, that's how I made the life value? I made it- oh, actually, that- Ah, uh, that kind of works. It, the 250 value goes down a little bit over time? No, it starts off at 1. No, actually, I do not know what's going on with this. That is not necessary, so let's delete that. Yeah, I think this is one that we remake instead of try to figure out what the heck I was doing before. Yee. Yeah, this is, um... 
I'll just... I'll just do some superficial labels. Velocity... Yikes. Duplicate elements. Okay, I know what this one does. So life is less than one. So, the, oh no, that deletes the geometry, essentially. I need to put that in its own delete node. Or wait a second. Okay, let me delete geometry. Life is greater than or equal to one. So that should kill the particles once they get above their life limit. Or at least should. Come on, you can do it. Here, let me lessen this by, yeah, 100. This better work. Okay, good. So they do have that limitation. This might, that actually might be good for life because it, or it might be really bad. I'm, I'm not sure. So this will be die if, die if end of life. Here we go. And over here, this is life. Count down because it seems to start off at 250. Or no, it starts off at zero and then it adds one 250th over time. So once this will keep adding a little bit so that when it gets to 250, it'll be equal to one. And then I say, oh, once it gets above one, delete. So that's a really complicated way of getting like an av a normalized gradient. And I could just... Yeah, no, let, let me fix this. Let me fix this into stuff I can understand. Yeah, no, that that's, that's dumb. That's really dumb. Instead, I can just store the lifetime as 250. Yeah, store the lifetime as 250, so if the age is greater than the lifetime, it will delete. The age is greater than the lifetime. Age greater than lifetime. So, yeah, that'll fix that, and I can take that out. Life end of life, yep. That's greater than that. And then where I reference the life, that is just the normalized age gradient. So, just saw that simulation nodes has been merged into the main branch. Yes, it got merged yesterday, and I'm so happy about that. That's why I made the Doctor Strange portal and released it on my Gumroad. Check my Gumroad if you haven't already. It's out there for free, but you need the 3.6 main simulation branch for it to work. Some people already uh, didn't see that part. Okay, yes. So, okay, time to... Yeah, let's just decipher this entire thing right here. So this is... Split branch... Particle. So that part isn't bad. So yeah, this no tree, once I make it a lot more digestible, it is not that bad. It's not great, but not terrible. Value particle age. Wait, why is there particle age? That is not stored any oh wait a second. Oh no, that's only if it's spawned in from another. No tree, we don't need that. This is based off of another file, if I am correct. But... Burr. What the heck is that? Well, that's supposed to be the grass. No, we do not need that. 
I dislike that grass. I remember making it and it was such a pain, I never want to return to it. Leaves, smoke, why is there smoke? Oh, I know why. From the other project I was working on with this thing. But let's go and just rebase this to something normal. Let's also remove that. Just have a regular background. And, wow, this is, it is dark in my room right now. So this bright scene is assaulting my eyes. Let's try to fix that. Oh my good. Oh, these trails. I don't want to fix these trails. I gotta be honest, I don't. Oh, I took the lifetime and then... I guess that does work, but I am insulted that I made it this bad. Like, yikes. I'm apologizing to myself because I did not think this through. Hargrave, what is all of this? Age divided by the lifetime. This is something else. Also, hello to everyone in chat. It's a very active chat tonight. Thank you for keeping it alive. So this should... I, I It's coming back to me why this kind of stuff is happening, but I am very insulted that I made it this bad. I'm going to take out the gradients just to make this simpler so that maybe I can understand the code I put in. So the life... I need to put in the life gradient, which maybe I should make a normalized gradient, which is just this, but just store it as a named attribute. Just to make it so that, yeah, that happens. What the heck was I thinking? Look all these notes, what is, what was I thinking? Sorry if I say that a lot, I am just really, really confused what old Ben was thinking. Like, even just the node setup, this is so unlike me. To make them this scatterbrained and bad. Okay. So let me put this all in one thing, and this will be... Resolution over time. I spelled that wrong. Resolution. I'll put that in there. So, curve. That's the... Okay. So, as we can see, I was able to severely reduce the headache of this so instance age just a little bit of cleanup let's see um instance curve curve instance i keep mixing up the order of my typing which isn't a huge deal, but it is quite annoying. So this will be radius. And I should just make that one named attribute, but I don't feel like doing that right now. What is this plane? Oh, that's the floor. Floor. Label everything because if you go back, you won't know what the heck you were thinking and you will despise yourself as I am currently so there we go now what oh I oh oh no I forgot that I didn't fix this up yet okay and that's the life yeah let me just it's amazing that quite a bit of this is just um yeah let's make the yeah let's make the life great or 
No, I'm not going to do that. The less nodes we have to set up, the better. Keep it simpler, because this is just a test project. Lifetime. I'm treating this as like the prelude to everything else. Such as... Doo -doo -doo. Because I'm going to have to fix up quite a few of the other ones I've made. Oh wait, I need to bring in the age divided by lifetime to get the normalized age. Divide. So let me label this normalized age. So this basically takes the max lifetime and divides the age to get a gradient from 0 to 1 rather than, you know, 1 to 250 in this case. So I'm just going to put that there. Which makes this a little more annoying to work with, but it'll be fine. The original velocity. And then... Okay, that's the... Two sets of speed. And multiply. This is speed over time. There we go. And what is this? Oh, this will be F2 up over time? Actually, wait. Oh. Gravity over time. Are the new sim nodes complicated? In theory, no. In practice, yes. Because in theory, the sim nodes are just, oh, it's a node system that just repeats every frame. The complicated part, oh my god, what did I do? Okay, I seem to have broken the nodes. What, what part did I break? Oh, wait. This is inverted. That explains it. There we have it. So this... There we go. It works now. So that just is the added velocity. In theory, no. The simulation nodes are just, hey, repeat this process. Like, if I added a subdivide node, it would subdivide it every frame. So 2, 4, 6, 8, all that. It just repeats what you put in it. The complicated part is setting up the rules and velocity if you want to do something like this. Okay, so this will be old velocity. Here we go. Okay, so now the labels make sense. I can let's let this one rest. So let's move on to another one before this gets stale. Let's see, which one needs updating? Let's pull from the oldest. Let's see, which one would be very, very nice? Ooh, wait, I think I know which one to do next. I think. This was a very cool one, but won't need... Oh no, it may need me to go and label everything, which would be very annoying. But this one, here, let me just try to organize this a little bit. This was the Geometry Nodes Machine Learning, in quotes, uh, simu simulation. So I need to see, like, why, why is that weird? Okay, there we go. Oh, wait, this is just for spawning in the hills. That's funny. Okay, so where is the sim? Uh, I think that's the wrong one. Where is the current sim? instances is that it okay i just need to connect the initial ones right here and then i need to label everything this would be a really good file to showcase the full power of geonodes so let me set this to 30 frames per second there we go okay so these cars learn where to go over time over time, they take the best performing ones, and then they repopulate based on the best. So with those few nodes, not these ones, with the few nodes inside of the uh, simulation. Here, let me put this into a collection. Sim 
There we go. Change it to green. Inside this, oh wow. Position is less than, subtract. I don't know what that does, but put it in a frame. Those colors make me so happy. I am glad. Originally, it was just like a very plain scene, but I was like, you know what? Let's let's make this, you know, like a nice little cartoony scene. It's a blender, after all. We don't need to make it look like a programmer's first project. Oh my gosh. I forgot how complicated this was. Okay. So, what is this? Okay. These are... Parameters? For learning those are the ones that can change i'm assuming initial parameters for learning okay this is the collider collider i1 or a sensor one, I should say. Sensor one. And then sensor two. I should put that in a group, but, you know, it's fine. And then the two, two of the learning parameters go and do that. So, let's see. Learn. Uh, learned. It. Distance. So that's something that can be learned by the simulation. And then both of those just add those up. Or no. R rotation. Okay, no. Yeah, there we go. Rotation. So the rotation, based on the hit distance, will determine... Is determined by the learned parameters, which are just labeled like LV2, LV3, because I'm the most creative person on the planet. And then original velocity or previous old velocity. And then this is the rotated velocity. Rotated. Not bad. Um. What was I thinking here? Okay, I need to add in something else to make this. So that one, I only have to calculate this value once. So store named attribute. Hit wall. Hit wall is true or checked then that named attribute will be set now i'll just reference this instead of having spaghetti because spaghetti even though i'm half italian is not really wanted in this situation it is a shame but necessary here we go so this is um yeah New velocity. This will be hit wall. Or hit collider. Collider. And I'll just label this hit instead of hit wall. That should be better. More explainable. So... I guess I should explain this a little bit more. So this is the main, this is the good part of the learning algorithm. So, um, let's see, if at zero, 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 penalize, penalize. Okay, so score tracker. Each vertice on here has a score attached to it, which will determine whether or not it reproduces. Because in the system, the ones that do well reproduce, the ones that do not die, similar to how it works in real life. 
Those that are able to adapt to the scenario live on, and those that do not, unfortunately, uh, do not carry on. It's mimicking biological evolution, just in a very, very simplified version. Okay, this is age. If age gets too big. Delete. Thanks for the full screen. Hey, no problem. By age. Delete by age. And there's that. Okay. So... After review. So that marks it for deletion. Oh, I completely forgot about a part of this. Okay. Wait a second. Why is this over here? No, that should not be there. Why is the velocity applied after the score? Oh my gosh. Yeah, a bit of this was, um... Yeah, apply velocity. Okay. Apply velocity. Store slash apply. Store slash apply velocity. I forget what this is. Oh, if it hits, then it stops it from moving. Okay, let me go and move that down here and rename that frame. Just trying to keep this a little more. If hit stop if hit stop <laughs> yep that is pretty good okay so all of these have a score the further along they live they the score goes up every single frame if they hit a wall they the score goes down and if they stop moving the score goes down as well or no, wait. Wait a second. So that just means I can... Yeah, and then that would be fine. Right? If they stop moving, then, then they just... Oh, wait a second. Wait. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so if they hit... If they hit the wall, then they die. But also, if they stay in the center, they... They do do do. If if close to zero, if close to zero penalized. Whoops. Close to zero pen. Close to zero zero zero. There we go. So this is the brains of the op operation. This determines which ones move along and which ones do not. But for the actual scoring system, uh, that part is a little bit different. So here are the scoring nodes. Oh my gosh, I forgot. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. It is fine, but I am... I'm a bit disappointed. This is a complicated project. So, this will be... Randomize new... New learning parameters. Well, let's cleanse the nodes inside and out. Let's do it. Okay. Uh-huh, deviance, speed value, randomize, and deviance, wait, what is going on? Oh, okay, okay. Wait a second, why is that like that? No, no, this, my code is wrong. So what this does is, no, it should, it should take the previous, Named attribute. 
and then randomize it. Yeah, no, 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 no. So the ones that do this, next one, they'll deviate more, but they'll all be based, oh, wait a second. They'll still be based on Okay, no, that still works. I don't know why I had these nodes in there. Let me put them into a frame just in case. Because this would take, like, the total min and total max value that that attribute could be and then randomize it. Even though that should not have been the case. Actually, let me keep those connected. Just in case I need to bring it back. Okay, so this is more understandable. So this will be ran, um, random, random deviance. So this deviates from the old named attribute. Here we go. Old initial old parameter and then this will be the new one okay sorry if this isn't the most explained thing i'm trying to figure out my old code and why it was terrible okay so this node doesn't need to be a simulation reason why is that you know, the calculation just happens once and then it's fed back into the system. So once the nodes die, they get sent off into the scoring nodes, even though it's technically not a sim. Just gets sent into here and then that happens. But then when it does, it gets referenced again, kind of like the buffer hack. A little bit. Even though I could have all of this inside of one node again, if I... Hmm. Or no, it could just be a node group. What am I talking about? I could make the scoring nodes just a node group, and then it would... Let me try this. Or the animation wouldn't transfer, because I have the deviance going down over time. Let's see. Let me label this so this is road. I don't need to fix all this. One day. Floor. Road cube what is this cube car instances okay that's fine this will be car instances so yeah i could combine all this into one geo node but maybe it's it's better that i have it separate for now this kind of projects are perfect for helping children fall in love with math I I hope the complexity of it does not scare them. <laughs> Cause this is this is something else. And then maybe just for clarity I'll go and make sure you can see. There we go. The geometry being input into the nodes here for the node group. Because unfortunately we can't really do a for each loop with um with an attribute value. It's unfortunate, but hopefully in the future. Actually, no, it's better if they are separated because I can label them individually. But I do hope for four each loops for other projects. Okay. So the scoring nodes, those, they take the only the good scores and then pass them along. O okay, so only the good score data. Right? Oh, wait a second. Wait, no, we do need this. So score... Data from good score geometry. Or I could just sample index for the old parameter. Yeah, like what? 
Okay. So this will keep the top. Okay, that. Need to think a little bit more about this. Let me separate this. Keep good scores, and this is score overall. Overall car score. Car scores. Okay. This is... I think it's okay. Now this part right here would... Randomize the seed value for all of those, which is understandable, but... Here, let's hide the unused sockets so that we can see that. So we could plug that into there and it would be fine. Dare I say a little bit more accurate? Because this references the good score geometry, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. So it keeps the good score geometry, only the cars that have the good scores, and then it propagates that value to the other geometry. Which, if I'm being honest, there may be a much better way of doing that, where I don't need two different geometry values. Actually, wait a second. I could just store... I could just go and stuff that into this node and make it better, I think. Maybe? So that I can just have it inside the node? I don't know. This is... I'll leave it as is. Like, I'm not I'm not here to make this perfect. I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup. Oh, and that's the actual wall. Collider wall. While the other road is just visually there. Okay. Uh and I'll put that into the sim just so that we know, oh, that's a part of everything. Okay, so that is a fixed up scene from 3.5 to new 3.6 nodes. I'm happy. I'm, I'm okay with it. It would need severe updating to sim score. Sim learning. Yeah, it would need... A severe overhaul for me to make it right. Oh, we're almost at an hour. But I'm not done fixing up these projects yet. So let's keep going. Let's go and open up a new one. Which one is worthy? Armature delay? That could be a cool one. The snap effect. I don't know. We already... Right, wait, is that the... Oh, no, that's the old reaction diffusion. Hmm... Let's try this one. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Okay. I was a little worried that something broke, but... Wait, this is the buffer effect. Okay, it looks like we'll be able to update this uh, in a much better way. Armature, where is the... Okay, okay, there we go. So let's do simulation zone. So here... To make it so that we are no longer reliant on the buffer. Let's go and do that. We should see. There we go. It's working already. I just, I can now delete the old nodes there. So now we have this in the zone. This was one of the first buffer projects I was working on. So let me show you what it does. It makes essentially mesh based motion blur. Which is very cool. So, I was like, hmm, the Spider-Verse effects look very cool with their kind of smears. So this is a way of doing that in an interesting way. So, wait a second. So this takes the current geometry normal in position. 
understandable. I, I get that. So technically it's the same geometry for both of these, but I just have it like moved over a bit. The position is normal old. Wait, why is... Norm new. Wait, what is this for? That doesn't make sense. Oh, wait, I know what this is for. I labeled it completely wrong, but this is how I got the velocity back in the day. Yikes, I, uh, I did not know what I was doing. So, if you get the old position and then the new position... Whoops. Position old and position new. Maybe it was the normal originally... Yeah, okay, so it was the normal originally. That was the original input, but then I changed it to the position to get the velocity. Which worked out better. Okay. So this is... Get moving data. Get moving data. And then... Air, um, area... Or no... Direction of movement? Let's see. Gradient of direction of movement. Gradient of direction of movement. Not confusing at all. Then here, what is this? So this mixes between that and that, which I could just use a normal mix value for that now. So instead of that, it'll be between that and one. That'll make it a bit more explainable. I think this was made before the new mix nodes came through. So let's do that and let's change this to a vector so that will mix between the old position and the new position. There may be a way for me to make this a lot better, but I think this might be the simplest one. So mix, factor, mix factor, mix to new position. Mix to new moving position. There we go. Mix to new moving position. Okay. Maybe I should just store the velocity. Because that... No, I don't think that's needed. Or is it? No, just mixing between two positions is more under understandable for everyone. So, old position. So I'll just get the, vo the velocity this way. You know, it's not the best, but not the worst. Or I could just take this up, well, I could get the velocity without having to have these two, but it's fine. New position. Or shader. Nope, that's the old one for the shader. But if I calculate the velocity, I could just store that, and then it would be fine. But that means I would have to make this just a wee bit more complicated. Hmm. I'll try both methods, but for now, let me just save the current version. Let's delete these old point lights. You know, just cleaning up the file. Okay. Sim mirrors. Or no, sim delay. It's a little more explaining of what happens. Uh oh, is my stream lagging currently? No, it's back. Maybe it was just lagging on my side. Hmm. I could just subtract. Uh oh, yeah, I'm having big 
uh, frame drops on my side. Sorry about that, everyone. Yeah, I could just scale this and it would be fine. Just store the velocity and then apply it. Yeah, that may be better. Let's try that. Does this work the same? It does. Okay, no, that's better. Okay. So this is offset. Velocity. From off velocity from offset. And then this will be live velocity. Velocity. Uh, apply velocity off. Nope, I spelled that wrong three times. Offset. There we go. So we reduce the amount of nodes and stored data needed, but it makes it a little less. Um. Sustainable, so scale or how do we describe this? Okay, so it limits limits limit offset. Yeah. Offset to moving position. Limit offset for delay. Do I need to normalize in there? Well, for that, I need to see... Okay, let's put this back in the shader. So instead of having these two, I just need velocity and change this to a length node. And there we go. Now it works. So instead of two inputs, we shortened it to one. And it looks incredible. Actually, could I just use a power node? into there. Ah, a bit bright, so maybe let me tone that down by quite a bit. Yep, good enough. There we go, just tur turning down the amount of nodes needed. There we go, for all of that. Geometry node editor, so yeah, that's the setup. Oh wait, wait a second. Oh wait, but that's the inverted version of it. So that, what does that look like now? Ah, okay, so this inverted that effect. That is not what I wanted. I wanted the inverted version of that, so I could just scale that by negative one. And then normalize it. Scale. There we go. That fixes it. But the thing is... Yep, no, it needs to be normalized. Well, that is unfortunate. Um, let's see. Th okay, so what this node setup does, let me remove the name. It makes it so that the parts that are in the motion kind of vector, those ones do not get delayed. The ones that are in the path. The ones outside of the path, the ones that are behind the motion, those do delay. That's just a divide. I feel like there's a way to make this better, but I'm not entirely sure how. So that just mixes... Map 
exact range. I can make this simpler. I knew it. So one, two. Then it'll either be that or that. There we go. That makes it quite a bit easier. And it works the same. Who knew? So two min and two max. There we go. So going over the nodes now, I was able to simplify it greatly. Um, let's see. Yeah, what, what would this be called? The parts that are behind, like moving away, and the parts that are moving to. I'm not sure. In moving direction in moving direction in moving direction i i guess i mean hmm Yeah, that, that is a much... That is way simpler now. Like, I was worried that changing the mix to the kind of velocity... Or maybe I should change that to offset. I don't know. But that is the simplest way. We get all the, no data, all the data for the shader editor, and it works just fine. I could also get the distance data here. Then it would work, but I need that stored for all that. So I could, well, let me just see this data again. So I'll label this A, just to see that. Is this Blender 3.6? Yes, it is. 3.6 alpha. The simulation nodes have finally been merged and I could not be happier with them. Because finally I get to update my projects with, know with knowing that it will actually lead to... Hmm. Oh, there we go, okay. I could make projects without things being severely edited later on. So here we can see the parts that are moving in the direction I guess someone could use this for, like, uh, cell shading. Kind of. But if it's moving in the velocity direction, we'll do that. And if not, it'll be outside. So there's that data visualized, which that is... That is quite the scene right there. Just... That's cool. That could be a logo right there. Just like that. Just do that. Have a little bit of smoothing, you know. Smooth out the jagged edges and then boom. Ah, oh, this is nice. I'll keep going because, you know, this is, um... Optimizing. I, I like optimizing this stuff. But this is now done and ready to go. Severely optimized. I mean, before there were many more nodes. Oh, sample index can be clamped? Huh. I... Wow. Oh, wait. Clamp the indices to the size... Oh, okay. Without putting the default value for invalid... Okay. That is actually brilliant. That that could be very helpful later down the line. I forgot that was an option. I feel like that's been there since day one of the sample index node, but I am not sure. But I'm glad it's there. That sounds like it'll be a lifesaver. Even though I think that could be done in another way. But it's nice having the little checkbox there. I won't mind things being easier for all of us. <laughs> the more options, the better. Unless the node size gets too big. 
I recently have been playing an Unreal Engine, transferring one of my projects into there. And turns out, Unreal Engine has this thing called Control Rig for inverse kinematics. And, you know, general bone controls. But their inverse kinematics node is so incredibly complex. It boggles the mind how complex it is, just for something as simple as IK. I would show you a picture, but at the moment, you know, I, it's fine. But here's Blender's IK thing. You know, you see the stuff there. And I find it even a little complicated because, you know, you have the armature and then that. But imagine this, but twice the size. That's Unreal Engine's IK node. It is a pain to work with. But yeah. It's good that it, <laughs> most people don't have to worry about that. But yeah, there's that updated, so let's save that and move on to the next one. Open, and which one should I open next? Let me just make that bigger. Oh, we have more simulation armatures to go through. I think I'll save those for later. We have the drone sim, that could be cool to update. I want to update... Let's see, the pizza tearing one. Where can I download Blender 3.6? You need to scroll down until it shows the experimental versions or just look up Bl blender 3.6 alpha download and then it'll probably point you into the experimental tab okay so this one and of course the hdri is not there this was for making parts of the pizza that can go away oh my gosh I'm going to remake this. I do not even want to update this. I want to remake it. I've been playing with 3JS and I strongly recommend it. I've heard of other people. I've, some of my friends work in 3JS. I'm very interested in it. I haven't taken the plunge just because, one, I've been busy with Geonodes. And I'm not that great at regular coding. But I am interested in it. So yeah, there's that. The pizza. I, I actually like the scene quite a bit. I mean, the pizza, the, the topping looks a little off, in my opinion. So I need to change that up a little bit. Subsurface scattering is a must for this one, apparently. But let's just get up for baseline. Perfect for uploading our animation. It's easy to start if you can blender. That's good, because I can blender. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll need to look into that. Delete the unnecessary nodes. Oh, I labeled one of them. I labeled elasticity. And that's it. Okay, so it seems like the actual physics of this isn't too bad. But the initial randomized curve placement seems to be... Atrocious. Jeez, what have I done? What did I do with this? This is terrible. What have I done? Oh, I know what I did. It doesn't make it any less painful, but I know what I did. Oh my gosh. Okay, so, oh, oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Yikes. Okay, so the initial placement of these... I'll, I'll need to redo this. I, I don't know how to spin this. I need to redo it. There's the curves version, which is a lot simpler, but this one is parts can be merged. The parts of the distance can be... What have I done? 
That's that's never something you want to see. Okay, so let's label some of these. So this will be collision, whoop, collision, whoop, collision. There we go. And there, that is not how you spell it. Collision, collision. Okay. I need to remake this. I need to separate these so that they're more understandable. Velocity to velocity to pinned ends. Okay, there is that. That does make sense. Here, let me. Yeah, I need to separate this. So that's pin ends, and then here is velocity to pinned ends. In ends. Okay, that is way more understandable now, even though, you know, this node is a little bit tall now. Okay, velocity to pinned ends, so it switches between the velocity to the pinned ends and that. But the collision, it's weird that I made it so that the collision happens after that, but I'm okay with it. Elasticity, so this is blur velocity, blur, okay, velocity, blur, slash, damp, slash, gravity. This is, wait, why is it more I am getting more shocked with how I made this the longer. Oh, wait, I know why I did that. Blur over gradient. Okay. Over. I need to actually spell this correctly. Blur over gradient. Okay. So this part is okay. So that's the distance. Where's the split nodes? Here they are. Uh-huh. Is it Minecraft music? Yes. Split. Um. Split curves? Or no, split edges. That's that. This is split edges. So this splits the edges based on whatever the heck I determined over here. Again, you can tell how amazed I am with my Ben's previous, my own previous code. Okay. This is this is very, very, very daunting. Okay, all that for edge section okay this will be uh, apl oop, apply velocity this is distance or I'll label this ends distance distance between the start and end points Start slash end points. There we go. Now all this back here, I do not want to touch because this is this is annoying. Okay, this will be don't or no merge merge section. 
No, not merge C section, merge section. Let's just merge. What have I done? Points or curves. So many memorable moments in this live stream of pre present Ben reacting to past Ben. You are absolutely correct. If I were to go back to past Ben all those four months ago, I would tell them one, everything's going to be all right. Don't worry about it. And two, what the heck were you thinking when you made these notes? Label them. So I will say this to all of you, label the nodes that you make, or else you will be yelling at your future self, as I am now. Or yelling at your past self. So, instance curves, instance curves, um, no, instanced, instance edges. Points for no meshed curves. No meshed. There we go. Yes. Yeah, so I hope this is very entertaining for all of you. <laughs> okay. Dart slash end curve guides. Okay, so these, okay, so. <sighs> when did I store the, oh, I did store the gradient in there. Huh. Man, I can. I don't know how to do this better. I would have to... I need to recreate this project. Rather than, you know, trying to fix up my old broken code back when I didn't label things, I need to go and make new code. That is better. Because I don't know what's going on. Like, for all the folks that I, I made this on a live stream, you can probably go back and see that one. Guide, start, slash, and positions. Yeah, I just need to remake this. Random placement for... A long guide. So I understand what is kind of going on with this, but it is... I did not think ahead when making any of this. Like, now it's more understandable. I mean, it's a large project, but now I can understand what's going on. Oh, and I labeled this one! The one most unnecessary part I did label. Huh. I can't believe it! Yeah, okay, so let's save this one and let's move along. We don't need the marshmallows in this one because that's for a different version of it. For you, yep. Unnecessary. That was for the old version. Oh my goodness, what the heck is all this? Oh, that's for the other pizza slice, okay. Let's move this into the lights collection just so that I can collapse it. Which one is the simulation? Sim Goop. Lovely. That is... Okay. So all that's for the pizza. Let me just label floor. There we go. That... That's enough. I, I cleaned this up as long... As much as I needed to. So let me 
make that green. Green is what I labeled the sim stuff because geometry nodes are always colored green. So that is enough. Let's go and open a hopefully more simple cleanup file. Strange portal. Oh, I have the old Doctor Strange portal from all that time ago. Ooh, and I could... Okay, so here's a fun project that I've been wanting to take another look at. So you might be wondering, why is there a text object here? Why? Well, here's the thing. This little project, once I get it back up and running... This little project of mine... Oh, it looks like I'll need to... No, I don't... No, yep, I do. I need to replace the some nodes because this is the old, old version of it. Okay. Oops, let's not put that there. So this is another game that is playable inside of Blender. Does this work? There's only one way to find out. Okay. Wait, where's the where be the shader? Shader editor? Oh, I didn't color that red in the beginning. Okay. Geometry node editor. Oh no, that that is working. Okay. Okay, so I have a very complicated system. Like, that's the complicated system, but you'll see what that system does in a quick second. So this right here, if I play the simulation... There we go. So right now, I'm using my key inputs to drive this character. Make it go from left to right, up and down. And the way I'm doing... How am I inputting the keys? Well, I'm taking this text object and recording which keys are placed in it. And every time there's a change in the amount of vertices in this, I measure that change, and then I say, oh, if it's a change of 13 vertices, that means that's a W. If it's a change of 24, that's an S. If it's a change of 34, that's an A, and so on. And then I, you know, add up those values in order to affect the velocity of the game character. Old velocity... Old velocity and then new velocity. Wait, why do I store the old position? Huh. Interesting uh, turn of events. What is... Oh, wait. Oh, no. What the heck was... I'm going to assume that was a conversion issue because I will not accept... And that was me doing that initially. Okay, let's flip that out. Dude, I need that. I'll pay. <laughs> well, it may be on my gum road, but if you want it, like, really soon, just send me a DM, a DM and I may be able to send it over. Because this needs, as you can see, some polishing. I don't want to put stuff on my gum road that isn't super polished. Well, if you want immediately... Uh, yeah, just send me a DM on Twitter or something, and then I may be able to send it over if I get it in a good condition today. No promises, though, because I do not know how bad this is. Why is the old position old? I have the velocity! Why am I storing... Oh, why? No! Sorry, I'm giving you way too much good Ben reacting to old Ben content. Why... Oh my goodness, that, 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 mm, mm. Apply velocity. This is why I do these streams, so that you could see my thought process and what not to do. So, um, orient to velocity. But yeah, and also this file, this would probably be free because this is not in working condition. It's, it's, it's not great. It's not great. Um, velocity by, oh, by key press. Let's put key in quotes. 
PID decoder. Oh, I did label that. Very nice. There's that. So this will be Y velocity. And then, well, we don't... S is not used. I can't exactly go down. So W equals that go up. I could just use a switch node. I think that would be better. More explainable. So if W is pressed, that goes up by 0 0.8. It does make it a little bit bigger, but that, that's completely fine. I'm fine with that. And then E. Oh, why did I put E into there? Oh, wait, maybe I can make it so that I can fire a little gun. That could be cool. And this is the... Man, what, what was I thinking? I apologize that I'm yelling at past Ben so much. He just didn't... He just didn't think all this through. He was thinking in the moment. Just, oh, let's get this done. Not, no, let's go and make this correct. Let's make this seamless. So, collider... Collide. And this collision is only on the up and down version of it. Which is, you know, unfortunate, but it's all right. Or wait a second. I could make... Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I could just make a sphere collider, which will help this a lot more. That may be what I need to do. Let's try and make a... I'll send you a boilerplate of a 3JS project. Oh, thank you. Let's see, proximity. Yeah, let's try to put a sphere collider in this. No, not source position. I need that in there. The source position stays the same. Uh, I just need the length. Wait a second. The length of the velocity. Wait a second. Would that work? It is greater than... Okay. The distance... That may make it work, so let's try it. I know, well, nope, that did not work. Okay, less than. Okay, that, that means I just put a sphere collider on this, and I may be able to make it so that the sphere collider is bigger than before. Okay, so let's delete the old stuff and replace it with, hopefully, the more understandable new stuff. A is greater than B. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. Extremely understandable. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not sure it's understandable. Like, what? Where do I place this so that I can actually... You know, be like, oh, yes, that is what is happening. I understand. Collide. So what if I were to add? Can I make the sphere collider bigger? Okay, let's... Where's the initial spawn point of this thing? Let's raise it up. Okay, no, let's subtract that. Oh, yay. Okay, now the Sphere Collider... I put in the Sphere Collider radius. That's good. So that means if I select the controller and start typing... Uh-oh. I broke it. I apologize, everyone. I broke the simulation. Oh, I know why. I know why that happened. 
Yeah, or do I? The collider means that it cannot move if it hits something. That is... Oh, yeah, okay. How do I make it so that... I use a reflect node in the orientation... Oh, wait, that might actually work. Hmm. That might work. I don't want to get hung up on making collisions, but... Huh. But I did make a collider where I can set the... a sphere collider. Basically what Mario had back in the day. In the old N64 days, Mario had a just a sphere collider. But I need to make it so that if it runs into a wall, it'll resist that wall. But then it would fall through the floor. So maybe a raycast was a better option? Maybe. I might revert this back to a raycast. Yikes. Raycast. Then the length. The length is just the length of the velocity. Or is that even needed? No, I can just do that. Let's scale this by the distance. Okay, that does it. Okay, so not as bad as I thought it would be, even though this collider math is super condensed. Very annoying. But I made it even more condensed, which makes it so much better. It's like, ah, uh, I made it so much more confusing. But I, I apologize, everyone. <sighs> okay. So it is getting a little bit late. I'll go until 11 o'clock. Eastern Standard Time. But yeah, there's the collisions. So let's go and take... Oh, wait, I forgot another part. This still has the... Oh, don't move on the other axes. So... Let me think about this for a second. I know what to do. This won't be pretty, but I need to multiply the normalized thing, but I need to combine XYZ. So kind of like what I did before. Even though, wait, 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 wait. Ugh. You could see me sighing because it's like, oh wait, collisions! Collisions are the most annoying thing in this entire system. Will not be told otherwise. What have I done? Back, 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 back. Okay, scale, that's happening. Okay, so I had the mix node for a reason. Because I can't I could mix these in a non-uniform manner. So I can make it so that it'll mix the Z different than the X and Y. Okay. So this is really, really dumb. So I basically reverted it to what it was before. Wide on Z only. That's why you label stuff, so that you're like, wait, why is that happening? Well, I can see why that's happening. So, yeah, let me, let me revert this basically the entire way. So that, uh, yeah, that'll only happen if that. There we go. So I did basically revert it back to what it was before, but this time, this time it's labeled, so I know what the heck I did. <laughs> I'll collapse that because the other inputs are not connected. There we go. Okay. So let's play this again. 
Okay, can someone please tell me why? Tell me why? Oh, wait, I need the raid direction? Oh my gosh, this is quite annoying. So I need to make it so that it only points... Wait... Points down, but... But... Huh. I am thinking... It doesn't go up because the ray cast is happening every single time that's happening. If I separate... Oh. If I separate that, then that'll happen. I need to set that to the positive? Oh no, so I do need to pull, multiply it by negative one. This is... Oh my goodness, this is... You could see me being frustrated with my past self again. But in this case, it's because my past self was kind of right. This is the least annoying way of doing collisions, and it's still super annoying. Okay, let me move this over. So this is the key decoder. So... Hmm. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, I actually did label this, which is good. So the old versus the new. Wait a second. No, I can simplify this. So how do I find the change from the live to the old? Okay, let's see if this works. If it does, then I can vastly simplify the process. Or maybe not. Yeah, okay. Go back. Okay, so how... So I store the domain size of... Oh wait, I had that open the whole time. That is a little annoying. Sorry. So I store that... Store that as the new? No, no, no. This is the wrong way around. What was I thinking? So these attributes are labeled completely the wrong way. New, new, and old. So this is old and old. So that is stored, and then that's made old for the next loop around. Or wait a second. I could, instead of making that happen... Yeah, okay, let's just do the order of operations correctly on this. And I need to make sure that it works every single time I do this, or else I will be throwing my proverbial default cube at the wall. Okay. So, you key press. I need, okay, let's rename this to... No, um, vert count, yeah, vert count old, and then vert count new. So, vert, whoops, control C, uh oh, vert count new, then vert count old. I think I broke it. Let's see if I did. Play. Yep, I broke it. Okay, now what did I break? Okay, so that's the new. I need to get the difference between... Wait a second, I could make this simpler. Okay, 
So what I'm currently trying to do is find the difference between the vertex count in one frame versus the old frame. So yeah, I should be able to do this in much fewer nodes, but I'm going to save this just in case I severely mess it up. This version is still broken, don't get me wrong, but we'll see. So if I store that, Hmm. So we get the old versus the new. I think this is why we use the outliner so that I can actually see what's going on. Old and new have the exact same count. But that's because, you know, that, that hasn't been updated. Okay, so I need to think. I need to store the old point data. Or no, I need to see the difference in count data from the old to the new. So I need to store kind of the velocity. Or no, no, that's so dumb, no. Vertex count new, but we stored the old vertex count. So that gets fed into there, and then the difference is there. So I just need to take the new versus the old, and then we have it. Oop. A, D. Oh, nope, that works. Nice. Okay. We go. Oh, sorry it's so zoomed out. I keep forgetting about that. So there we go. How would I make overshoot interpol- or how would I add interpolation to scale and rotation animations in Blender? I would recommend looking up a dedicated tutorial for that. Because, um, that's not- I'm not currently working on that, but- here, I'll, I'll just, I don't usually take live tutorial requests, but because I can do it in five seconds. So you have this animation right here. You go to the graph editor, look at this curve, and then I forgot the hotkey for it. But I think it's T for interpolation, but you could just like, where, where are the thingies for that? Um... Yeah, I forgot where... where is that? Huh. I forgot where you can select these and then find the... values for it. But if you press T, you can find the interpolation thing, so you could make, like, the bounce interpolation. Just give me a good price I'm buying. Wait, um... I thought I missed context, but I'm assuming you're meaning this file. But yeah, I recommend looking up tutorials about that because a live stream is not the best place to be, you know, to figure that out. It'll be a little hard to sift through the information. Yeah. Hmm. That is old vert count. This is new vert count. New vert count. And this is um vert <laughs> difference. So this will be, what should I label this as, vert amount, or the vert text verts with geonodes? Oh, not, I don't really know how to do that with geonodes just yet. Making custom interpolations like that is, eh. If you're meaning like physics, like velocity overshooting, then I have many live streams about that, but I can't really 
I don't really want to change this current uh, live stream because this is more of a fixing up old projects one. Keyverts, and then Keyverts is in there, which means that now I should be able to go in, and I broke it again. Keyverts, Keyverts is in there. I know that it should work. Keyverts. Make sure that's put into there. Wait, where is... Okay, that's the text one. Oh no, it is working, okay. This is new letter D vector. General overshoot like scale animation with units. Oh yeah, you could use the float curve for that. So with that float curve, what I usually do is since you know you can't exactly move this above where you want it to go, I just usually make it so that it goes to 0.5. And then you multiply the result by two. So now you can make it go twice as long. So here, this is this part that's 0.5 in this section will now be one. And this part that's 0.7 will be 1.4. So that's how you would do it. Hopefully that was understandable. Just use the float curve, but to exceed the limit, you kind of need to stay in the limit, if that makes sense. You just change the relative amount of it. And if you want to make it even more, you just put that to 0.25 and then multiply it by 4 in the end. I wish there was more support for like a general interpolation node, like ease back and forth, up and down, bounce back and all that. But we don't have that yet. That was one thing animation nodes did have that I really liked. Okay, so... Yeah, so, new letter detector. Let's see. Difference for letter birds amount. This is technically, let's see, e vert count, new let her vert count. New letter detector. Okay, uh, Y velocity, velocity by key press. Key. Bert counts decoder. There we go, that's more explainable than, oh, here's this weird thing. Now, I can make it so that this is much smaller, <laughs> just by, well, moving those nodes. But I did optimize a good amount of this, so that's a little more understandable. Actually, wait... <laughs> I keep saying, wait a second! But no, it's good that I store the, the new keyverts in there. Okay, orient to velocity, yep, that is understandable. Okay, so all of this is just for the new key decoder, which actually, it would be much better if I had this as another geometry node object, and then I just put the difference value into the scene. 
the, but no, this is fine. If it's all in one, then that means people won't be like, oh, wait, how did you do that? So this will be arrow. That's for instancing. Collider. Oh, the coins. I forgot about the coins. Well, fortunately, this is pretty simple. Just need a simulation zone. I forgot there were coins in this thing. Oh, no. There we go. Oh, I completely forgot about that. Ah, okay. So I store the ID beforehand. Store, store ID. Bug. Uh, for stability. There we go. Okay. So this is if layer too close. If it's too close, it'll just delete the points and that'll be good. Are you making a Mario level? Kind of. It's based off that. Let's delete the coin, and that's the coin instancer. There we go. Instance coin. Actually, I could make this a whole lot better if I change this to a float and then just use a combine XYZ. There we go. Much more compact. Let's change that to like 25 like it was before. Maybe, now the seat doesn't need to be randomized. To delete coin. There we go. Oh, that is so much more. There we go. So I'll put this into the Sims collection. Make that green. Sim. Then there's the text controller, where, you know, you just type in here and then it'll work. Actually, let me go and, why is that animated? Let me rotate that by, like, 90 degrees. Actually, wait a second. Oh, I, I'm going to reorient all of this. Make it better. So, let me just do that. Rotate that. And that. All transforms. Can you please explain? Oh, there we go. Okay. So this, I will just rotate by 90 degrees. Uh, nope, not all transforms, just rotation in your case. Excuse me? <laughs> oh wait, no, that... Uh, rotation. Okay, and then for this, I'll need to just change this from a, the Y value to the X value. And then I may also need to, wait, let's play this. Okay, nope, that's good. There we go, so I just changed the orientation of it. So that's a little more in line with like where everything in Blender faces. Okay. Um, could I have this be? I'll keep this as kind of like a 3D scene-ish. Okay, we just need a little bit more polish on this, but oh no, it is pretty much 11 o'clock, which means that I should end the stream soon. Sorry, everyone. I need to actually go to sleep. <laughs> Here, let's go and zoom this in just so that it still has that kind of orthographic feel without it actually being orthographic. There we go. Camera's a little bit far, but that that's fine. And then, wow, I didn't even color the materials, only in the object space. Let's go and color these. There we go. Maybe a little more reflective. Very nice. 
Um, I should also... Yeah, if I add to there, I could make it so that... Subtract. Hmm. That is unfortunate. If I added to there as well, I'm trying to get like the, you know, make it stay off the... Oh, no, that does work. So now that will make it, let's take a look at the, our little text input device. This will make it so that it will land on the, there we go. It'll land a little above the floor, which isn't bad, but I don't entirely think it's necessary for the time being. That makes it bounce. So let's just make it so that I'll land on the floor, but that is an option. Collide on Z only? Okay, so... That isn't bad. So we store the old and then the new. I could just connect the new into there. Does that work? Of course it works. <laughs> Oh wait, no, the reason it does work is because that's still connected. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I need to see if there's a smarter way of figuring out the difference between the, uh, the old and the new without having it all connected like that. Even though I think that's the most optimized way of doing it. Hmm. Need to think a little bit about that. Or wait a second. I'm going to... No, that wouldn't do it, would it? I would just like plug that into there, but the new, vo the old one, I would store right after. So I would reference it twice. I would reference that object twice, but would limit the amount of nodes needed. Hmm. Old, new, but that is the most explanatory thing. Old for account. Uh. Hmm. New becomes the old, and then I change the new to be updated, and then I get the difference between those two, and that gives me the, uh, the new letter counts. Because unfortunately, oops, unfortunately, whenever I, we don't have just a key input thing, which would be very nice. I'm just tracking what keys get input when and what the difference is between the old frame data and the new frame data. So let me do this. Actually, let me set it so that instead of left, it's center, so that we can, you know, we can see all that happen in real time. Let me turn off viewport denoising. That is very annoying. Ooh. And also, uh, you could have it hop on nothing. I did not implement I did not implement the, oh, you can only jump if you're on the, you're on the floor. You know, classic programmer stuff. Isn't it so happy? Oh, and also, you cannot hold down keys to make it work. You can only tap. Which is unfortunate, but in some games, that is enough. So yeah, if you do want to make a game in Blender, it's very possible. Okay. Hmm. Maybe I could simplify... 
What if I ran a simulation on the text here? And then just port the key thing into there. No, well, no. It's simpler to have the controller... Um, so this is letter vert counts. E vert, vert counts. Yep, and then we say it's 13 that equals w a because i <laughs> i went in and i changed the preview resolution oh no but the render resolution needs to be well actually no you can't render out these sequences i guess you could animate it to make a tool assisted speed run kind of thing Now let me do that, just so that it's, you know, nice and even. Okay, not bad. And with that, I think I'll end the stream. It's been two, a two-hour stream, which is very rare for me. I'm not used to doing that. I used to, I did a four-hour stream once, and that was, woof. That was not great. Um instance arrow but it's good updating these projects to you know 3.6 because the sim nodes are now in the main branch and yeah so now i could in theory go and uh put this out in the world maybe why is that not pointed in the correct direction? Rotation? Oh, that's mirrored. That explains it. Rotation. There we go. Okay. Now, when I do... There we go. Much better. Now, I'll always be pointed in the right direction by default. That's nice. There are quite a few games that you could make, in theory, with this. <sighs> oh. And maybe just for, like, one little cool thing with the, um... With this. Just, just to show you. Let's make another sim, which will just be the, uh, the trail of where the, this object was originally. So, simulation zone. Let's put that as the output. Them. And we will join the sim geometry into there every single frame. So watch. So now if I play this, we can see where this was every single frame. Which is cool. Actually, wait. I want to go and scale the instances by just like 0.99 every single frame. No, that is too slow. So let me go. There we go. Oh, that is cool. I like that. And uh, unfortunately, they won't delete, so that starts happening. Blender, the baking does really doesn't like it when there's too many sims uh, in the cache. So we can see this starts to lag big time. But I would need to put like a little limiter in it, which maybe I'll do right now. I'll need to make an age parameter uh, on the do 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 instance. So the age. Then I'll store it. Do 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 add by one. Okay. Yeah, you can tell I'm getting tired because I'm going on long unnecessary unnecessary tangents. So I'll delete the instance if the age gets greater than. 30. Just to keep the cache fresh. Let's put that into a frame. Put that into a frame. There we go. There we go. 
good practices. I didn't label those because, you know, honestly, I don't plan on keeping it. But there we go. Now it shouldn't lag. It's cool to have the, um, the trail. I'll, I'll keep it. Why not? Oh, so that we can see where everything's headed. Trail. Ooh. Trail. Not trial trail. There we go. So this is age. This is delete by age. And those are understandable. So this is arrow. Yep. Just put in there since it's an instance and then that happens. There's the text controller. Again, it would be very nice if... Wait a second. No, I can't. No, maybe I can. Actually, I need to test something. I probably have tested it before. But I really want to see. So if we have a text object... Or no, string to curves. And I realize the instances. Put that in there. Oh wait, but I need to turn down the preview resolution. Um, set res spline resolution. Let's change that to one or two, if that's possible. A, B, W. Nope, that doesn't work. Or does it? Let's see, I'll play the simulation, but does this update? No, it doesn't. Okay. So you can see that. Oh, man. I was hoping that this would update every single time I put that in, because that would make the controller a lot easier on me. What in a string? Will this fix it? So let's... Nope. It's not. That is very annoying. You would have to keep entering it every single time. So that's why we have the text controller in there. <sighs> Unfortunate. But, yep, that's why we have this. So that we can just keep adding text live. Oop, there it went. WSAD. There we go. Circle, what is this? Oh, that's the coin. Let me move these into an asset folder. Lighter, that should be in the sim, and the text, text controller should be in the sim. And that'll be in there. Let's move the asset folder up here. There we go, okay. So the assets are in one folder, and all the stuff that is used in the simulation are in that folder. Very nice. Okay. There we have it. So yeah, that's that. Uh, drag slash gravity. No, I'll just have this as update velocity. Update velocity. Okay, so that's the key inputs. Yep, understandable. Even though I could change that to a flow of 0.8. And then just have it on the z-axis. That is much smaller and significantly better. And I need to label this to x-velocity. 
There we go, much better. I like that. And that, I really, I don't like that part. Just because it's big. And with that, folks, thank you all for watching this longer stream, updating old projects to the new simulation nodes in Blender 3.6 Alpha. Currently, on my Gumroad page, there's the Doctor Strange portal made using these new sim nodes, so I recommend you check that out. But more projects will be going on there. I have enough projects that I need to update to keep that busy for a year. So keep an eye out there. I'll be adding projects every so often. Some will be free and some will be paid. The paid ones will most likely come out once 3.6 officially comes out. But there'll be tests up there in the meantime. Okay, stuff that is, you know, fairly useful, but maybe not the most useful thing on the planet. So sim player. Here we go, text controller. Yep, that makes sense. And with that, I think I can save this in its current state. So let's look at that right there. Te text controller, very nice. Let me save it. I love watching your projects. First time coming to a live stream. I've been trying to get the courage to stream myself, but I don't have the knowledge yet. It's okay. Uh, these live streams for me are more of like, oh, I want to test stuff out while explaining what I'm doing because that helps me understand what I'm doing. And then, um, you know, all my knowledge and my thought process is saved for other people to know. You go and decipher. So that's, that's good. Did I use a custom font for this? No, it's just regular font. That is good. The reason the poly count is so low is so that I could, well, not count the vertices. I could count them in the, uh, in the, I forgot what it was, but I was able to count the vertices, like, using the statistics and this object. Oh, no, I, I couldn't see that. Huh. Maybe it was the outliner. It was probably that the uh, the outliner. I just saw what, how much geometry was in this one. But there we go. Ooh, it starts out with a little bit of kick to it. Oh no, that was wrong. So yes, it'll start out. So that will show you if it's actually working. And you know what? I'm going to. Oh wait a second, I forgot. You can make it so that there's multiple players in the scene. So, if you want to, you could have multiple characters going at once. <laughs> yeah, maybe you'll want them, maybe you won't. But, you know, cool stuff. Undo, undo, let's just leave you so that you start off like that. And there you go. Okay, let's save this. And then Alt F4, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.